Well, good afternoon, everybody. We're delighted to have you all uh, here for what we hope is a uh, wonderful occasion. Um, I'm delighted to be here with uh, uh, the chairman of the council and uh, council members Che and Graham, uh, who have joined us as well, and the uh, others who are uh, here as a part of this. Um, the uh, folks here, of course, have an enormous uh, reach and touch of people who are um, immigrants in our District of Columbia and folks who are advocates for thousands of district residents who are seeking protections and, frankly, have every right to look forward to normalcy uh, in their uh, lives. Um, I especially want to acknowledge uh, three people from our administration uh, today. Uh, one, Julie Koo, who is the director of the Office of Asian and Pacific Islander Affairs. Where's Julie? There she is right there. <laughs> uh, also, Ngozi Mezi, who is the uh, director of our Office of African Affairs. And, of course, Roxana Olivas, who's the director of the Office of Latino Affairs. <laughs> uh, today, I am announcing that I will be transmitting to the Council of the District of Columbia the District of Columbia Driver's Safety Amendment Act. Uh, it is historic legislation designed to increase public safety for all who drive, ride, walk, or bike. Uh, in the District of Columbia. Uh, the bill will allow all eligible residents uh, the right to obtain a driver's license for identification or identification card from the District Department of Motor Vehicles and to register an insured vehicle regardless of their citizenship or immigration status. This bill will also uh, help fight uh, the underground market that provides illegal driver's licenses, and we hope to be able to put an end to that uh, by this action uh, that we are taking. Uh, it complements the green light that our neighbors in Maryland have given uh, to its undocumented residents, and I'd like to take the opportunity to applaud and thank uh, Governor Martin O'Malley for the work that he has done uh, in the state uh, that is just to our uh, north. We believe that Maryland and now the District of Columbia are in the forefront uh, of this movement, uh, which I think we can term a civil rights uh, movement. Um, as you know, uh, the Congress and the White House are currently uh, debating immigration policy. Uh, my administration also has had numerous conversations about protecting the rights of the many undocumented immigrants uh, who have made the District of Columbia uh, their home. Uh, are raising families here and contributed, contributing to our growing city. And I was delighted uh, just two or three weeks ago to be able to participate uh, in the immigration rally uh, that took place on the grounds of the Capitol. I think we had some 50,000 people who participated. And I was really proud to be the first government representative to have the opportunity to speak there. So uh, thank you all again for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of our city. Um, we are moving on the calls <clears throat> for action that will allow people who face uh, daily roadblocks that make their lives difficult to have the opportunity to drive to work, uh, drive to work, to uh, drive to school, to go to daycare or church, or all the other things that so many people of, uh, in this city uh, take uh, for granted. Um, it also will make our streets safer by ensuring that all who wish to drive can come forward and secure the proper training and be tested. Uh, now, we have a number of folks who have joined us today, and I appreciate uh, their being here, and I want to give them an opportunity uh, to speak. Uh, first of all, the chairman uh, of the Council of the District of Columbia, who then will be followed by uh, Council Member Che, who has the uh, jurisdiction uh, over the committee that has responsibility for this and then Councilmember Graham, for whom I know this is a hugely uh, important issue uh, as well. Chairman, come on up. Uh, good morning to everybody, uh, or good afternoon to everybody. 
It's been a short day. Um, I, I'm really pleased to be here. Uh, this is an important issue, and I want to begin with this. A driver's license is about a person's ability to drive. It should not be about anything else. It should not be about whether somebody is a, uh, is a citizen of the United States, uh, about whether the person has registered with the Social Security Administration. It shouldn't about be about any of those extraneous matters. A driver's license is about a person's ability to drive. And if you think about it, what has happened in this country and in this city over the decades is that increasingly a driver's license has been about something else, about identification, for example. Uh, and there may be some value to that, some value to that. But what we have seen, because of the evolution of what a driver's license is used for, what we have seen is that increasingly there are people who drive without a driver's license because they can't get a driver's license. Well, what does that what, what does that uh, accomplish in terms of the public good? Not much, because then we have people who are driving without a license who maybe aren't really very good drivers and who probably don't have insurance. In fact, almost certainly don't have insurance because how can you get insurance to drive a car if you don't have a driver's license? So we've kind of gone uh, the wrong direction with driver's licenses over the years because the driver's licenses have taken on this importance for, th for matters that are extraneous to the ability to drive. So that's what we're getting at here, and that's why I appreciate the mayor's legislation because it is a statement of uh, the fact that there's a problem, a recognition of uh, a need for a solution and, and, uh, and seeking a solution that allows those who are undocumented to be able to get a driver's license. Uh, I think that is so important. I do want to say that uh, Councilmember Graham and I have uh, also, uh, over the years, several times now introduced legislation which is pending, and I see it as companion to what the mayor is proposing, and that's important, companion to what the mayor is proposing. Dealing with this issue, uh, uh, which is that people um, who uh, want to drive uh, ought to be able to get a driver's license based on their ability to drive and not based on something else, whether they're documented, undocumented, whether they're citizens, uh, whether they're in good standing, you know, whatever, whether they have a social security number, etc. cetera. Uh, so I think this is, I, I applaud the mayor for, for your step with this legislation. I look forward to um, signing it and introducing it on your behalf, and I look forward to uh, working with Councilmember Che, who has jurisdiction over this issue, so that we can move forward on this legislation. Thank you so much. Too. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as, as you may know, uh, we do have a bill. It was uh, put uh, uh, through the council, uh, the, introduced into council by uh, uh, Chairman uh, Mendelson and, and Councilmember Graham, and we had a hearing on that bill. But that bill uh, has certain features of it that uh, I felt were not adequate to the task. And the task, as the chairman has mentioned, is to provide a, a mechanism whereby people who are undocumented can get a driver's license, can make themselves safer and make the people of the District of Columbia safer by going through the proper channels, uh, adhering to the proper requirements, and getting insurance in order to be able to drive. We uh, are going to have another hearing, and now I will combine the mayor's bill with that other hearing. Uh, on June 6th. So we'll take this up on June 6th, and it's already uh, uh, scheduled. The importance of this to individuals cannot be overstated. We have many thousands of people in the District of Columbia who are undocumented. Without being able to drive, they may not be able to work or get a better job. They may not be able to take their children to school or to a doctor if they, if they had to do that. They may not be able to many, do many of the things that we take for granted. And to impose those uh, burdens upon them because of their undocumented status is, I think, uh, completely unfair and inhumane, in fact. So I want to see this rectified, and I want to see this done in a way that does not offend federal law or involve anything else involving federal law. Uh, I think that we will proceed in the way uh, that Maryland has, and other jurisdictions, by the way, have. There are other uh, states that have already done this, and there are other states that have this kind of a proposal in front of them. So you will see this, that this uh, is a, a movement uh, around the country. What we will do is we will uh, put this in place, and it will be uh, a license to drive. And it will specifically say that it does not 
meet federal identification purposes. So we are not attempting in any way to do anything but provide a license to drive with all of the benefits that that accrues. Now, maybe the elephant in the room is uh, the idea that people say, well, if people are here uh, without documents, if, they're, if they came here illegally and, and driving is a privilege and not a right, why should we extend this to people uh, you know, who are here without documents? My answer to that is, is uh, uh, multi-layered, but one thing I do want to mention, many of the people who are here without documents came here themselves as juveniles and have grown up here. Others have come here uh, for reasons that you know, drove them out of their own country. But whatever reason that they are here, ladies and gentlemen, they are here. They are part of the fabric of our community. And therefore, we must provide them with the very means of, in some cases, being able to work, being able to go to school, and all the rest of it. We will be safer. They will be better off. And we will be doing something that I think is fair and humane. And we must do it, and we will do it. I'm quite sure. Thank you. Five and a hug. Uh, Señor Alcalde. Es un buen día para todos. Muchísimas gracias. Felicidades a todos. It's too bad, it's too bad that we missed May Day. That's correct, Osi. But we have single de Mayo as a powerful reminder that we are doing the right thing today. We're doing the right thing by everybody in the District of Columbia. I want to say also congratulations to our mayor because I honestly did not think there was a single secret left in the district building, <laughs> that we had become the most transparent entity in the United States. But you know, Chairman Mendelson, nobody's seen this bill yet. <laughs> And so somehow, oh, you saw it, Mary? Oh my God, one person has seen it. But you know, you know, it, it, what really matters, what really matters, and we're all looking forward to reviewing the bill, and I do want to acknowledge Chairman Mendelson who has stood on this issue. Uh, we've been together on this issue, and we have, I think in a way, we've pioneered this issue, and, and Mary Chair, you've been a steadfast supporter. But I do want to acknowledge that there's no substitute for the mayor's support. You know, you stepping forward today, Mr. Mayor, and saying that this is something that matters to you, this is something that matters to the people of the district, cuts through so much of this argument and permits us to move forward to make a law, and that's what we want to do. Thank you very much. We have, uh, we have a number of our labor friends uh, who, are here today, who are here today, and we asked a couple of them to uh, speak as well. Uh, first is the gentleman who is the uh, president of the Metropolitan Washington uh, Council of uh, uh, the AFL-CIO, uh, and of course everybody knows who he is, and that is Josh Williams. And then he will be followed by uh, the gentleman from the SEIU, Jaime Contreras. Uh, who we've worked with on many issues. And Jaime, thank you very much for coming today. We'll start with Josh and then Jaime. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we applaud the mayor's leadership in taking this important step in expanding access to driver's license to all DC residents, regardless of their immigration status. We also thank the leadership of Chairman Mendelson, Chair Council Member Shea, and Graham on this issue, as well as other council members who stand with the immigrant community for equality. Across the country, the tide is turning. Just yesterday, the state of Oregon passed a bill 
to offer driver's licenses to undocumented residents. And this week, in fact, I think actually today, the governor of Maryland is set to sign a similar legislation, one that organized labor was intimately involved in getting its passage. We know that after today, several other states will follow. The time has come for driver's license, for stopping deportations, and for immigrant reform. Our immigrant brothers and sisters are a part of the city, and they are a part of this nation, and they deserve equal rights. <laughs> Washington, D.C. has always stood on the right side of history and this issue. In particular, this mayor. He spoke out against the so-called, quote, securities communities, deportation program that tears families apart, making DC the first city in the country to reject the program. And he issued an effective executive order so that no police officer would inquire about a DC resident's immigration status. The right to drive, the right to have a city-issued identification will dramatically improve the lives of thousands of immigrant DC residents and workers. Some of these workers are currently exploited by unscrupulous employers because they lack any kind of documentation. Parents will be able to safely drive their children to school. Families will be able to seek better economic opportunity. This bill takes a major step in the right direction. But Mr. Mayor, we know there is, of course, some room for improvement, specifically in the area of whether these licenses are marked or unmarked. We have also endorsed Council Members, Council Chairman Mendelssohn's legislation, and we will work with the Council the chairman, and the mayor to advance a one city, one license model. Yeah. One license for all, regardless of residence immigration status. Mr. Mayor, we again thank you for your leadership and ongoing leadership, and we look forward to working with you and the city council in putting forward a dramatic first class Bill, thank you very much. All right. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Jaime Contreras, and I'm the uh, vice president of SCIU 32BJ, um, and I run the DC, Maryland, and Virginia chapter for the union. Uh, we have about uh, 10,000 members in the District of Columbia in DC alone. Uh, mostly uh, uh, commercial office cleaners, the folks that maintain this building are our members. The folks that secure this building are our members and security officers. Uh, most of our members are immigrants, um, so this obviously affects them and their family uh, very dramatically. So first I want to echo what everybody else has said. I want to applaud the mayor for championing uh, this common sense uh, initiative uh, to make our city, uh, our streets safer, uh, and also very importantly to remove uh, some of the roadblocks that keep uh, thousands of DC residents uh, from, you know, living a more productive life, uh, which should not be the case in our nation's in our nation's capital. Everybody should be able to live a productive life, right? Oh, just checking. Um, we also, I also want to echo what uh, other folks have said. I want to, I want to uh, thank the chairman, uh, Chairman Mendelson, uh, Council Members Graham and Che, uh, for their leadership, uh, and as well as the Office of Latino Affairs uh, in our community for their unwavering, uh, unwavering support for this, uh, for this uh, issue. Um, district elected officials are actually, uh, for some time, not just now, are actually setting an example for the rest of our nation uh, to follow with this common sense initiative. Uh, this initiative will also help uh, integrate uh, new immigrants and their families into our communities, 
uh, with sound policies that are in line with our economic interests and our values as a city. Um, uh, you understand, as, as, as elected officials, that all workers, documented or not, should be uh, protected by local, state, uh, and federal law for as long as they live in our city. Um, undocumented residents uh, need to, you know, uh, need a license in order to drive to work, uh, take their children to school, uh, buy groceries, go to the hospital, what have you, all the things that we do on a daily, on a daily basis. Uh, we need an efficient process to allow them to become licensed and insured drivers in the city. Um, providing access to driver's licenses also brings people out of the shadows. Uh, and increases their willingness, uh, the willingness of immigrant witnesses and victims to cooperate with law enforcement officers uh, and aid in criminal investigations, which right now some of them are really, really afraid to talk to some of our enforcement officers uh, because of the current system. Um, this is critical given that, uh, you know, that unlicensed drivers, uh, according to the AAA Foundation, are fi fi five times uh, more likely to, to uh, be in a fatal car accident. So it's crucial that we have uh, that we have safe streets. So, Mr. Mayor, uh, you stood with us uh, when uh, when we changed how uh, the policies or how MPD cooperates with the federal immigration officials. You stood with us in front of the Congress on April 10th uh, when we had about 75,000 people in front of the U.S. Capitol. I would, <laughs> we weren't allowed to say it very publicly at that time, but. But you know, we're also working very hard uh, as labor uh, and as a community to once and for all fix our broken immigration system, which right now is just not functioning for anybody. Uh, so thank you for being there as well. Um, and now we're obviously very pleased to be working with you and the, and the city council as we move this leg legislation forward. Uh, we are uh, safer drivers when all drivers, um, uh, when all drivers on the road are tested, licensed, and insured. That makes sense. It makes sense to me. I know it makes sense to everybody else. And today, actually. We are uh, uh, thinking of probably now or in a few minutes, um, uh, Governor Martin O'Malley is going to be signing, signing the Maryland's uh, driver's license bill, which is very symbolic for us as well. We fought really hard on that one. So we look forward to reviewing the bill, uh, and we look forward to working with the council and the mayor to make sure that D.C. has the best driver's license law in the country for undocumented workers. Thank you very much. You know, I couldn't help but stand there and think, wouldn't it be great if we could bring dem dem rights of democracy to all 632,000 people who live in the District of Columbia? You know, yeah, we're all immigrants in that sense, aren't we? <laughs> sure would be nice to be able to have a vote in our own budget, wouldn't it? How about something innovative like a vote for the person who represents us in Congress? Well, how about we just become the 51st state and it would take care of all of that? <laughs> we, have, uh, we have several other people who have joined us who very much want to speak, and I'm delighted to have them with us. First of all, and I'll introduce all of them at the same time. Um, the executive director of Man Many Languages, One Voice, uh, Sapna Pandia. Uh, the vice chair of the Commission on African Affairs, uh, Lloyd A. Uh, George. Uh, we have Father Marion, Ma Mario, excuse me, Father Mario Dorsonville, who I had to, the uh, pleasure of walking over from the Reagan building this afternoon as uh, we talked about uh, making this uh, important step forward. And then another, uh, uh, advocate who is with us today, uh, who's done so much work with the D.C. Latino Caucus, and that is, of course, uh, Mario uh, Cristaldo. So we'll take, uh, we'll take them in the order that I just mentioned them. So come on up, y'all. <laughs> Uh, my name is Sapna Pandya. I'm the executive director at Many Languages, One Voice. Um, and, I, and I just, again, as a, as a DC native, as a DC resident, um, as a member of the DC Asian and Pacific Islander immigrant community and a commissioner to API Affairs, um, I want to add my remarks to um, thanking and applauding the mayor for uh, his leadership in introducing this really important legislation, which is going to impact many of the Asian Pacific Islander immigrant community members, as well as other immigrant community members in the district. Um, 
I also want to take a moment and thank, of course, uh, uh, Chairman Mendelssohn as well as Councilmember Graham and Che for their leadership, um, not only on this initiative, but on other initiatives that have really impacted our immigrant communities. Um, but last but not least, I also want to mention the, the many tireless advocates and organizers and folks on the ground that have been really fighting for this, um, many of whom I have the pleasure of, of knowing and working with, um, folks of the DC Immigrant Rights Coalition, um, folks of other groups that have been fighting for several years. Uh, we know that it takes um, a concerted and coordinated and diverse set of people coming together to make such a legislation come to life. And so it's really exciting to see. I'm proud to see our one city stand as a leader in a, a lot of initiatives that push forward immigrant rights. Um, and this legislation symbolizes an important first move, I will say, an important first move towards ensuring equity for our district's residents and for making sure that we protect the civil rights of undocumented folks who live and actively contribute to the district on a daily basis. Um, I, I want to emphasize that we are talking about people, about individuals, about DC residents, about our neighbors, about our children, about um, folks that are you know, in our daily, every day. Um, people who contribute and participate in the district and uh, wish to participate much, much more, as has been mentioned before me as well. These residents that we at Many Languages One Voice work with um, are folks who are workers that need to drive to work, yes, but also parents who need an identification card, some kind of an ID to enter our schools, for example, to visit with their children's teachers, um, to borrow books from the library, um, to uh, you know neighbors who want to enter this very building right now, um, to participate in this uh, event that we're having today. Um, to have an ID like that is, is extre extremely important to be able to participate fully just as any other DC resident would. And I, I want to say that you know it is about driving, yes, but also this does symbolize, as the chairman had mentioned before, driver's licenses has come to symbolize identity and has come to symbolize participation and representation. And since this is a word that's on our license plate um, as well in terms of representation, I just want to say I'm proud again today to see it reflected in this legislation, in the common sense laws of the district um, uh, government, such as this and refusing secure communities to come into our district as well. But we do look forward to continu continuing to work on this very important issue. We want to make sure that we ensure that every district resident is afforded the same right to participate, the same right to be able to be represented in this city. Um, and so our work here is not done. Um, we thank you, Mr. Mayor, but we commit also to advancing the companion legislation that, uh, that Chairman Mendelson and, and Council Member Graham have mentioned um, to making sure that we actually have one license for one city um, and that we can successfully pass this legislation later this year. So we look forward to reviewing the bill. We applaud the DC government, um, the council members, the mayor's offices, all three constituent offices, and we look forward to having even further work on this moving forward. So thank you so much for having me here today. Good afternoon. My name is Loy de Rosa George, and I am here in my capacity as Vice Chair for Mayor Gray's Commission on African Affairs. As an immigration attorney directly serving immigrant constituents within the district and beyond. As an advocate for African immigrants, and most importantly, I'm here as an immigrant myself. So it is on behalf of the collective of these voices and experiences that I stand here today to wholeheartedly commend Mayor Gray in his initiative to introduce the District of Columbia Drivers Safety Amendment Act of 2013. Some may ask how will this bill impact the African residents within the district, as well as all the district residents. To be sure, even though a majority of the nation's African immigrants in the US arrived legally, and nearly half of all African immigrants are naturalized citizens, there is still a subset of this population that live, study, and work hard right here in the district that are no longer in legal status, and thus are now classified as undocumented. And it is for these residents that the Driver's Safety Amendment Act could directly benefit. Now, how does this benefit the district as a whole? As many has, have already spoken, to keep it simple, it's about public safety. We have all heard the numbers. There are an estimated 11 million plus folks in the country that are without status. And that number is questionable if they don't have any identity or if most of them don't. Arguably, there's way more than 11 million. Um, and the reality of the matter is there are thousands of individuals right here in the district who are not currently in status. But these good people still have to get up every morning, 
and put bread on the table, in turn fueling the local community and beyond. However, for many this means getting behind the wheel to get from point A to B with either no license or an expired license that cannot be renewed because they are no longer in status. And so the story goes, no valid license, you can't get insurance. No insurance means that when an accident occurs, everybody walks away an injured party. The stats are clear, providing access to a license for all who can pass a written and driven exam makes for safer roads. It increases the number of insured drivers, which in turn can lead to fewer folks fleeing the scene of an accident, as well as resulting in an overall decrease in insurance premiums for all. Another public safety benefit that has been touched on this evening is a license has a way of formalizing one's identity so that we will know, we will now know who it is that is living and working amongst us, thus bringing folks out of the shadows in communities that they work and live in. Again, a plus for all. Studies have shown that having a license means that if an immigrant is a victim or a witness to a crime, they are more likely to stand up and speak because they actually have a recognized identity. And on the flip side, with public safety threats and alerts all around us, accesses to licenses for all is the perfect and arguably a cost-effective way to identify otherwise nameless immigrants in our community. Lastly, making sure all qualified drivers within the district have licenses boosts the bottom line. Taking a driver's test, obtaining a permit, registering a car, and eventually getting a license comes with fees, all of which increase the fee revenues for the city. Not to mention with a license, you better feed the meter, and if you speed through lights, there will be a ticket to pay. <laughs> to sum it up, the District of Columbia's Driver's Safety Amendment Act of 2013 makes sense and a safer one city for all. Bravo, Mayor Gray. Good, 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 very good, excellent. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, um, friends. Being in this podium, I feel like preaching, but I'm not going to preach. <laughs> as, as always, I refer to Mayor Gray. Uh, he's a Catholic mayor, and Catholic means universal. Before I say, always I greet him, hello, universal mayor. Which means the vision that we have in today's world, it is not only for the city, but for humanity. I really like the way that this measure has been presented. We are focus focusing uh, our eyes and human beings. My name is Father Dorsonville, Mario Dorsonville. I am Vice President for Catholic Charities, Caridades Catolicas in the Archdiocese of Washington. And I also have the honor to be seated at the Mayor's uh, Interfaith Council. Um, Catholic Charities, since its beginning, has been embracing every single human person without difference of religion, immigration status, uh, nationality, faith, everyone comes. When a person comes to our doors, that person really needs everything we can do for that person. In that matter and in that perspective, the mayor's uh, office of Latino Affairs has been a wonderful partner. And I really want to thank again Rosanna Oliva for doing a, such a great job on behalf of the Latino community. You deserve a plus. You have been a fighter. You have been someone who has inspired us in so many ways. I have heard so many good news and so many good reasons for embracing this wonderful day on behalf of those who really have the burden to take all these people into our offices, health centers, training programs, immigration offices. Just want to relate to all of you just one uh, story that I have as a, uh, as a vice president for mission for this organization. One day I was working at the Spanish Catholic Center, a healthcare center, and a man just came and grabbed my arm and said, Father, would you like to bring me just one minute? I need to talk to you. 
And I say, yes, of course, let's go into the room. And the man says, Father, I have pain in my heart. I said, well, let's go to the doctor. And he says, no, 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 no. That's not the pain in the heart that I have. Pain in my heart to be able to perform my work, to take my children, and to have this constant anxiety to realize that, they, that I got the worst poverty that a human being can have in today's world, which is to be invisible and faceless. I really think that man expressed what many people around the world, in this capital, in the nation's capital, across the country, are suffering. Today, we raise a banner of being sensible and especially being aware of the human tragedy. Everyone has been born to be a human being. But when we see in our streets people who really struggle to live, it's because we are just getting tougher. Let's not be afraid. Let's not be afraid to promote sense of love, sense of compassion, sense of solidarity. When we bring that seed in today's world, this, nation, this nation is going to be better. It's going to be a leader because we are teaching how to approach the dignity of the human person. Mr. Mayor, council members, all our prayers, 123 people we serve a year with Catholic charities in the Archdiocese of Washington. I really think that this is great news. We are human, we are good people, and I am, I'm sure that we'll never be repented for what we do in order to say, you are a human person, we want to embrace you, we want to love you, and we want to inspire in your heart a sense of hope. Thank you so much. Father Dorsonville would be really something if he did preach, wouldn't he? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I want to uh, actually, uh, Mario has uh, deferred to my good and longtime friend who is uh, one of the, uh, I guess, founding members of the Latino Caucus and who does so much work uh, here in the city. Uh, please welcome Franklin Garcia. Thank you, Mayor Gray, for your leadership. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Franklin Garcia from the DC Latino Caucus. Today, the District of Columbia reaffirms that it is a progressive, progressive city that, uh, that looks out for the interests of all the people. Uh, like when it joined nine other states to support same-sex marriage in 2009, or when it joined 16 states to provide medical marijuana in 2010, today, the District of Columbia joined states like New Mexico, Washington State, Utah, Illinois, and a host of other states that are currently deciding similar measures to address the estimated 2 million undocumented drivers nationwide. And just as dreamers have Senator, Senator Dick Durbin, uh, the immigrant community in the nation's capital have uh, Mayor Vincent Gray as an ally. As we move forward, we thank the many who have helped us uh, get this far, the council members who sponsor legislation, the pro-immigrant groups, and of course our friend, Mayor Vincent Gray. I want to make a special mention of someone that is no longer with us. Saul Solorzano left us on August 17th, 2011. But I know wherever he is, he will be proud of this moment. Thank you. All right, we're going we're gonna to wrap up our uh, program, formal pro program this afternoon with uh, a DC resident who has a story that, uh, to be shared. Uh, Rufina Pereira uh, is going to do that. Come on up, and uh, we appreciate you being here with us and look forward to uh, hearing from you, Rufina. Yeah, those electronic devices are pretty pesty, aren't they? Hola, muy buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Rufina Pereira Good y afternoon. soy residente del noroeste de Washington, D.C. Good afternoon to all. My name is uh, Rufina Pereira, Pereira, and I'm a resident of the Northeast Washington, D.C. Uh, soy una empleada de 
limpieza de edificios de comerciales. I work as a, as a commercial, uh, commercial cleaner uh, for commercial buildings. Uh, soy del Salvador. I am from El Salvador. Thank you. Um, eh, quisiera compartirles un poquito nada más de una historia muy familiar. And I would like to share a little bit about a uh, familiar story. Um, si este proyecto de ley se llevara a cabo, cambiaría algo de mi vida y de muchos más if this project, que no tienen. If this project was, were to ter, take place, it will change uh, my life and that of uh, my family. Um, hace unos cuatro meses me deportaron a mi hijo para about, El Salvador. About four months ago, my son was deported to El Salvador. Él dejó dos carros. He left uh, two cars. Uh, Tengo otro hijo que él, por no tener licencia de conducir, él, cuando estoy enferma o sus hermanos están enfermos, no los puede uh, llevar a ningún sitio por no tener and, and I have another son that he doesn't have a driver license. So when I'm ill, or when my uh, children are ill, he's not able to take us to the uh, hospital. Uh, este proyecto de ley, este... Si se cumpliera, pues dar, cambiaría muchas vidas. If this project, this um, legal project was to take place, it would change many lives. Um, le debo de agradecer al, quiero agradecerle al señor alcalde, Mr. Like, Gray. I would like to thank uh, Mayor Gray. Uh, y al, al señor concejal y al Miembro de, uh, miembro del concilio. And to the uh, chairman and to members of the city council. Porque este proyecto de ley se pueda cumplir. So that this um, legal project uh, should, should come to a fruition, fruition. Y le agradezco a todos, al señor alcalde, a los concilios por hacerme esta invitación, por, por estar acá en el participando en este proyecto. And I thank everybody, the city council, uh, Mr. Mayor, for having, including me, uh, in this uh, process. Gracias. Thank you. All right. Thank you all very much. I, uh, I too, want to express my appreciation to the chairman and the members who are here. And uh, we all heard <clears throat> Councilmember Che say that she's got a hearing schedule for, I think, June 6th. And uh, wouldn't it be great if we can get this bill marked up, approved, marked up, marked up, approved, <laughs> um, and get it signed into law before the council goes into recess, which would be July 15th. Uh, I actually think we can do that. You know what, and uh, if we can do that, um, I will sign it immediately uh, upon it being transmitted uh, from the council. And man, we can have one heck of a party at that point, can we? <laughs> All right, uh, if we have any questions from the media, we'll be happy to, uh, to take those. Tom? It may, it may be the uh, stamping of it that says for uh, not for federal ID purposes, and uh, we did that. We did that purposely, recognizing that we tend to be under a certain amount of scrutiny uh, here as the District of Columbia, and I don't want to have that turned into the issue. Uh, the issue is, frankly, being able to do everything we can uh, in the city to create these opportunities uh, for people. Um, we uh, we know that we've already we've already heard from some folks you know on the hill grumbling about this uh, bill. So I don't want to turn that into the issue, uh, Tom. The issue is trying to be able to create those rights for immigrants in the District of Columbia. Uh, someone who's 
very interested in this bill called me today and said that one of the issues that if you don't stamp the, the license, you, you may lose a significant amount of Homeland Security money. Is that, is that an issue in the background that I'm not aware of? I, I, it hasn't been an issue for me. It's more about the rights of people and trying to go as far as we can in the District of Columbia without the oversight, which we know exists, uh, the, there, uh, any bill that we do in the District of Columbia, the Congress could step in and uh, introduce a resolution of disapproval. And we don't want to give any legal basis for having uh, that done. So we're going as far as we can. Yes. Yes. We'll be paying attention to this probably across the country why this won't be good for federal ID purposes? It, it would be if I had the authority to do it. Uh, federal ID purposes in this case means, you know, going into a federal building like, I guess, the Reagan building, which is right across the way, or getting on an, uh, an airplane or other, um, you know, other uh, requirements that would be associated with a federal purpose. Um, we don't have the authority to do that. Anything that, anything that uh, is, is valid is can, can be authorized by the officials of the District of Columbia, it will be valid for that. And frankly, if we had immigration reform and got rid of these kinds of things at the national level, we wouldn't have to worry about that now, would we? Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, estimate on how many individuals this might involve, be it both the, the driver's license and the ID, how many in the District of Columbia would be I, eligible? I actually don't, because we've got people who you know, some of whom probably are having to drive and are doing it without the proper authorization or people who are, you know, without a driver's license, obviously they don't, they don't have insurance. I think this will probably help us find out. The numbers are not so much important as it is being able to open the door to other opportunities for people in the city. But any estimate I give you would be just uh, really, uh, I won't say uninformed, but it would, certainly would be unscientific. Yes. Matt. So can you kind of clarify then, Mr. Mayor, what this license would enable somebody to do aside from, you know, locking them in for the ability to drive? If it's not an ID, you can't use it to get into a federal building. You can't use it to get on a plane then. Can you kind of describe the yeah, differences? But, but everything, everything that would require an ID in the District of Columbia, it will be permitted. We will honor it as an identification for people in the District of Columbia. It's just for federal purposes. For example, coming in the Wilson Building. Uh, if people have to, to use ID, which they often do coming in the Wilson building, we will honor that uh, as identification. Other District of Columbia buildings across the city, uh, we will honor that. Obviously, it is a driver's license. Um, obviously, it then permits you to buy insurance uh, in the District of Columbia on an automobile that you may own. So I think it opens a lot of doors, Matt, that otherwise uh, are not open now. And again, uh, not to be repetitive, but I invite the federal government to join us in this journey, and then we won't have to have this debate any longer. Mike. You're establishing a separate class of licenses. Is there anything uh, that would stop, say, Immigration and Customs Enforcement from coming to the city and saying, oh, can you give us a list of all the people who are, have this separate class of licenses and then using that list for their own purposes? I don't, I don't know that they would have the. Yeah, I was. Uh, the the. Are you familiar with the executive order Councilmember Che was referring to? Go back and take a look at that. We 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 spoke to that when we had the executive order when we talked about secure communities. We're not going to become instruments of immigration, uh, you know, uh, enforcement in the District of Columbia. That's what somebody else would do. I think it'll look like any other driver's license. It just will have the stamp on it that says not for federal ID uh, purposes. Otherwise, it will look like any other driver's license. And again, at the risk of being repetitive, if, <laughs> if the federal government would change that law, then it would just look like every other driver's license in the District of Columbia. Wouldn't that be nice? Thank you all very much.